Welcome back to another video of Robo CNC. I'm Marcel. This is the Plasma build and in the fourth video we started to make the gantry for the Plasma build. In the fifth video I took you through the process of selecting the right rack and pinion for your DIY CNC project. All the calculations, a beautiful Excel sheet in the previous video, so make sure that you have seen that one. In this video we're gonna collect the parts from Apex Dynamics, the rack, the pinion and the gearboxes and try to get the z-axis on here and get some movement uh, with the rack and pinion for the y-axis. So past me is now jumping in the car and the current me is now heading over to the CNC router to create some aluminum parts. So I came back from Apex Dynamics, well he does, and the rack and pinion or the rack comes in sections of one meter, so they say. So let me first mount the first one and then have a look at how do you align the second one with the first one. Since I had a cutoff, you might think that I'm now using the cutoff to align the two racks together. But of course you're not thinking that because this is YouTube. You are much smarter than I am. So I need exactly the opposite angle. And no, turning it around will not change the angle. And I also hear you think, what's that tool that he's using to transfer those holes? Well, guys, that's called a hammer. And the other tool is called a transfer punch. I'll put some links down in the description box below.
But before we can move the CNC Z axis of the plasma across the gantry with precision, we need to take the raw speed of the servo motor and turn it into controllable power. And that's where this little piece of engineering magic comes in. On the right we see the clear pad servo. The motor spins fast, which is great for speed, but not the best for torque at the pinion. To get a smooth and accurate motion, with a lot of torque and a lot of precision, we need a gearbox. And the gearbox is the piece in the middle. We need to slow the motor down and boost the torque, and I've chosen a 1 to 10 reduction that does exactly that. There are several types of gear reductions, belt drives, warm gears, spur gears, but I chose the planetary gearbox for a few reasons. They have a high torque density, so a lot of reduction in a compact size. So this one is a 1 to 10 reduction. They have low backlash, which is perfect for CNC accuracy. They are efficient, so planetary systems typically run at very low losses. And they have a coaxial alignment, so the input shaft and the output shaft are on the same shaft or the same alignment. And it makes mounting it to my NEMA 34 servo motors a breeze. Now how does a planetary gearbox like this even work? The servo motor drives the input shaft. And this input shaft is connected via a shaft to the middle gear, which is called the sun gear. The stationary part of this gearbox holds this black ring gear, so it also has teeth on the inner side. Between the sun gear and the ring gear are the planet gears. These planet gears, one, two, and a third one, mesh between the ring gear and the sun gear. The planet gears are connected to the planet carrier, which is this ring with three pins to hold the planets. And this planet carrier is then connected to the output shaft. Because several planets now share the load simultaneously, the planet gears can handle a lot of big torque while staying extremely compact. Next step, mounting the pinion to the gearbox with some spacers and some rings that I made off camera because the pinion unfortunately comes without any mounting hardware. Okay, that didn't work out as planned, so using an M5 bolt and the ring I made on the lathe, I pulled the pinion and the ring on the shaft. Now to mount the gearbox to the Z-axis, I made this plate earlier in the video, so let's try to mount this one. I'm using the slotted holes in this mounting plate to fine-tune the mesh between the pinion and the rack. Some people will prefer a little plate to reduce wear and tear, but since this is a CNC machine, I'm aiming for a tight, low backlash setup for maximum accuracy. On this link of the Apex Dynamics website, you can see a YouTube video on adjusting the pinion to the rack. And look, this simulation shows the real problem. If you have an offset between the pinion and the rack, there is a lot of backlash. So when reducing that to the correct amount, the backlash becomes minimal. So to mount the servo, the gearbox comes with all the mounting hardware and a nice set of instructions.
So now I'm tightening the bolts to mount the servo motor and to clamp the gearbox collar onto the motor shaft. The manual says to use a torque wrench, but I don't have the right one laying around. Luckily, I'm incredibly sensitive, so I'll just torque these by feel. Engineers, please don't panic. Guys, it's working. Starting to become a CNC machine. We have motion. The Z-axis is now moving along the gantry, which I'm gonna call the Y-axis for now. I love how smooth it rides and I love the sound. I was a bit afraid for resonance uh, since this beam is not yet filled with anything, concrete, sand or whatever. Uh, but it sounds really smooth. The gearbox, really smooth and it sounds perfect so i haven't done any testing on backlash we'll do that in a future video for now the servo is mounted to the gearbox to the pinion rack is mounted riding smooth so hope to see you in the next video and hit the like button if you liked it subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time